The Central Bank of Nigeria, CB and Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, has raised the benchmark interest rate by 150 basis points to 26.25% from the 24.75% of the last one. Now, the governor of the CB, Yannick Cardoso, made this announcement during the press briefing that followed the 295th MPC meeting of the bank. Moreover, the CBN maintained the cash reserve ratio CRR of deposit money banks at 45% and established the asymmetric corridor around the MPR at 100 positive and minus 300 basis points. Additionally, the bank set the liquidity ratio of banks to at 30%. Now, the governor of the Apex Bank attributed the third consecutive increase in bank interest rate in 2024 to ongoing efforts to control inflation, which rose to 33.69% in April, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. He highlighted that members of the MPC observed a significant decrease in other inflation indicators, such as food and core inflation, indicating the positive outcomes of the Apex Bank's hawkish monetary policy stance since the beginning of the year. Today on the show, we will focus on the headline inflation rate and the interest rate and its effects on key sectors, including the real estate development. Welcome to in Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, I am Justin Akadonia. All right, welcome back from that report as we delve into uh, the real estate development and, of course, the issues in the economy, the hiking uh, inflation rate and, of course, interest rates that were just reviewed yesterday by the NPC of the Central Bank of Nigeria. I have... Um, um, a real estate survey and value, as well as a public affairs analyst, Mustafa Ewila, joining me now to look at all of these issues. Many thanks for joining me, Thank Mustafa. You for me, yeah, it is indeed our pleasure. So, uh, over time, uh, this is like the third time um, that the Central Bank of Nigeria has increased uh, the MPR uh, this year. And of course, even before it was increased, uh, just as the analysts have been saying that um, businesses have not actually. Uh, gotten back from the shock of um, you know the increments that, that have been done over over the the month that uh, it will not be wise uh, you know increasing it yet again the third time so what are your thoughts really concerning the interest rate that was just uh, reviewed yesterday all right so thank you for having me uh, justin uh, mm -hmm. for me uh, since the news broke out yesterday uh, conversations have started from relevant stakeholders mm -hmm. and i tell you for free uh, I don't think uh, the CBN uh, should have done that as, I mean, looking at the timing. Mm -hmm. The year 2020 to 2024 has been a very challenging year, and that's the honest truth. Yeah. We started off this year with uh, the Naira devaluation. We started from the foreign exchange. At some point this year, Naira was a dollar to, you know, to Naira was about 1,500, you know. So we were still basking in that realm. And for this news to break out yesterday, for me, it's something that brings a lot of burden to real estate developers. Mm. So I recall that sometimes last year we had this conversation on the same program mm. when the interest rate was reviewed upward. Mm. Now the Central Bank of Nigeria has reviewed by 150 basis points. Yes, it that's is. about 1.50%. Mm. For me, I think that's a huge number considering the fact that this was done sometimes last year too. Mm. If you go to countries like uh, France, the interest rate in France is about 4.5%. Single digit. If you go to single digit, if you go to countries like uh, uh, the UK, the UK is about 5.25%. Mm. America also is about 5.25%. So I think we need to take a cue from these countries and find out what they actually put in place to have a single digit interest mm. rate. Okay. Don't forget that this interest rate by CBN, this 26.25%, mm. is a benchmark interest rate. Mm -hmm. The banks will but definitely that, have... They have like a window they have, that they... Yeah, they because they, they also want to make profit too. So, so these are issues that real estate developers are currently discussing about. Mm. Right now, there's inflation, no doubt. Mm. And one of the issues we are facing with inflation right now is it is ultimately reducing purchasing powers of investors. Mm. Real estate developers right now go around like you see them, a lot of projects abandoned. Mm. Lots of court cases. Some have started projects when the bag of cement was 4,000 naira. Now the bag of cement as I yesterday is 8,500 naira. Yeah. So all these are issues that makes it look like we're not reducing our housing deficit at a O. Okay. But I cannot blame real estate developers, but I think that the CBN and the NPR with the monetary, MPC. the monetary, yeah, the NPC, yeah, the monetary policy, plan, committee. policy committee needs yeah. to come to a round table to review this once again. This is actually a wrong timing. 
Okay, because one would actually argue that um, over time uh, the increments have been made and uh, the inflation rate is still hiking in as much as um, the CBN governor came out yesterday and said that some aspect of inflation had actually decreased, but that's yet to be seen because Nigerians uh, go to the market every day and uh, what they meet is different from what they met the last time they were there. But looking at that, no, I do, although you have mentioned the impact, so invariably now before this particular increment, before we talk about the effect that will go forward, uh, how has it really been, you know, for instance, starting a project and uh, uh, fulfilling it off, uh, to the completion uh, in terms of um, getting funding from the bank and from other uh, financial institutions? So funding still um, appears to be a big challenge for real estate developers. Uh, when you talk about funding, you're talking about source of financing. Mm. Source of financing is, is still a big problem because when you, so now we're talking about increase in interest rates. Yes. Don't forget that some developers got loans to finance projects mm. at the last 24%, 24.75%. Yes. Now, a, a, a fresh developer who is, come, who, is, who is a rookie coming into the business will definitely get it at this new rate of 26.25%, mm. depending on the bank is getting the loan from. Now, ultimately, this is obviously going to affect, you know, bring about inflation. Mm. When you talk about inflation, you're talking about three major categories. You're talking about the demand pull inflation. Mm. You're also talking about the cash pull inflation. You're also talking about the, uh, what's the third one? You're also talking about the cash built inflation. Okay. So the demand pull inflation is what we have in place right now. There's going to mm. be general increase in prices of goods and services. Mm. Now, the prices of goods and services will increase because a developer who started a project, because for any developer to start a project, there's something we call feasibility and viability study. You would have done your feasibility study and viability study. The viability is going to be looking at the financial viability, how viable that project will be. So you got, say, for example, 100 million naira to start a project. Now you are at the middle point of the project. There's inflation in cost of cement, in cost of other materials, cost of labor. Mm. So how do you want to deliver? Mm. So these are critical issues that has currently that's currently affecting a lot of stakeholders that, that has to do real estate. But I think that what is doable now for financing, uh, the uh, primary mortgage banks are obviously available, but mm -hmm. also their interest rate is now also very friendly. The processes of taking loans since the world go has been mm -hmm. a big problem. Mm -hmm. If you want to take a loan from mortgage banks, the requirements so are... the mortgage banks, do they really exist? Because if they did, how come we still have um, issues working mortgages right in the future? Yeah, so, so, so we have the Federal Mortgage Bank and we have other smaller mortgage banks. Yeah, so they exist. But the processes of taking loans, aside from the interest rates, mm. the documentations involved, the processes involved are crazy. Now, if you want to take a loan from any, any bank to, be, to, to finance a project, you require a lot of certifications, particularly building approvals and you know, relevant documents from the government. The process of you know, getting a building approval is not that easy. It's very rigorous. So all these are challenges that developers are currently experiencing. So mm -hmm. ultimately, it is going to affect, it's affecting the uh, purchasing power of investors. And one very tricky thing about inflation is that inflation is currently, you know, uh, you know ravaging us as a country right now. Yes, it is. But the, other, but the honest truth is that our income level is not increasing. No, Somebody true. earning a hundred thousand naira salary last year is still earning the same amount of money. And don't forget that the prices of goods and services have almost tripled this year. So these are issues, and if, and if inflation is not properly taken care of, it's going to lead to what we call recession. Recession, we've had it one time, and it's not something that is good for a country. So if, this, if certain parameters are not put in place by the Apex Bank, the CBN, issues like this will continue to disturb us as a country. Mm. There's going to be a slow in the economy. The economy will be, will be, will be stagnant. Okay. And when that happens, like I said, it will lead to recession. So ultimately, I think that... Interesting, the, uh, you know, increasing the interest rate right now shouldn't have come in at this time when we are still, you know, you know, in the mi in the mix of this uh, mm -hmm. foreign exchange shenanigan mm -hmm. and issues. So I think what they should have done is to look at the more easier way to cushion the effect of the uh, ongoing inflation we have. That because January, February, March, I think fairly April was a very tough year for real estate developers, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are still basket, a lot of abandoned projects go to let So, so what does this really entail now? Since uh, real estate developers cannot really uh, get the proper finance and funding for you know to carry out their Project, projects yeah. now, so what happens? Would over time we've talked about the housing deficit, uh, which is still currently wide. Right. You know, th does it really mean that uh, landlords will be increasing their rate over time, or what exactly are we going to see in the future? So, what is going to play out is going to be that. 
it's going to be difficult for more for us to continue to talk about the housing deficit. Mm. The housing deficit conversation is definitely going to continue for a very long time because there's going to be a it's going to be so difficult for people who want to invest in real estate to buy. It's also going to be difficult for people to even rent properties. So a lot of now, as at the last discussion, twenty-eight thousand housing deficit. Mm -hmm. That tells us that a lot of, about out of twenty million population of Nigeria to twenty million, twenty-eight thousand people are homeless. That's what it means. That's what mm -hmm. deficit means, and it means that they are not living in good accommodations. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, as at twenty thirteen, as at twenty thirteen, according to National Bureau of Statistics, a report that Federal, even the CBN confirmed, our inflation rate as at then was about 8% as of 2013. Mm. Now, as I fast forward to last year, January, our inflation rate was about 21%. True. So you, if you look at the margin of increase, it's so, it's, so, it's so alarming that it makes it difficult for anybody to even want to even invest in real estate. Mm. But trust me, as a, as a real estate investor or a developer, real estate has its way of you know, serving as an edge against inflation. Mm. A developer sold a house in Lekki earlier this January for 50 million. The same house was sold to, is, within the same estate was sold for 80 million last month. Mm. Because this developer, the honest truth is that they also have to consider the cost of you know, replacement. Mm. So the same house that he has built last year when cement was 5,000 was sold for 80 million in April and was, was also sold for 50 million in January. Mm. So, but, so, so, the, so the excuse was that, yes, it, I mean, if he need, needs to rebuild that house, he's not going to be able to build that 50 million again, which is no. the truth. So whether he, whether he's going to actually rebuild with the same money or not is totally irrelevant. But of course, so so is a prop is a is a cash making cow for mm. developers. So a lot of developers and real estate investors are taking it as, a, as an opportunity to cash out. That's the honest truth. Mm. So you cannot you can never go wrong with investing in real estate. That's the honest truth. But you have to get your timing and your viability. That's the, that's the situation. Price. That's the situation that that is presented before us right now because it is a hedge against inflation. We haven't. Jeez. Uh, terrible inflationary pressures right now in the country, uh, you know, over 30 percent. Uh, we have interest rates uh, that high that we, like yes. we had mentioned, you know, but if we know that uh, uh, housing and real estate can actually uh, stand as a hedge, you know, to guard against all this inflation, yes. how come we're not really encouraging real estate? How come we're not having specific banks or specific and um, funded from the government into that particular sector of the economy? So, so for me, I think I think this particular government, the administration of the Bala Metinubu, is doing a lot to see that how to salvage a lot of situation when it comes to housing. Mm. I know I know for sure that there are certain projects going on in different parts of the country, according to the, the governor of the state. If you go around Lagos now, the governor of Lagos State, within la, within this first year in office, has done over five thousand housing projects. In different parts of the state, these housing projects is it for the for the people at the, so, uh, so, the so, grassroots? So, so, so the housing project definitely are for the masses, and they are there. If you go around Lekki, like, you see a lot of them. If you go to Ikotu, you see a lot of them. In Korodu, a lot of them. So, so, but but the honest truth is, these informations don't go out so that much. The, the awareness about these projects don't go out that much, so people don't know. But if you really care to know, there are a lot of projects out there done by federal government, I mean, Lagos State government, mm -hmm. and are very viable projects that people can even low income low income earners. Can invest. Sorry, I'm, I'm, think, I'm taking you up on yes, that please. because if we talk about all of this housing investment that have been done by the government, of yes. course, it is um, um, on the part of government to make sure that the people are aware of um, this project yes. if they're actually doing it for them. Yes. When you talk about low income um, yes. earners being able to afford it, at the end of the day, when you go there, you take to put in some uh, uh, initial amount that you cannot even get, deposit, except yeah. you still try and get funding from this commercial bank. So at the end of the day, uh, it's um, the 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 big men in court and their okay. cronies and family members who actually get to you know own this low in uh, low uh, cost housing estate in the first place. Okay, so yeah, so the truth is that, yes, you, you are right at some point. You are right because I know that uh, sometimes when these projects are being executed, mm. the amount of money involved in purchasing them cannot be that easy for a low income earners. Mm. So what the government usually does in that manner is they make the payment very flexible for you to pay. Okay. So they tie you to a finance, a mortgage company that you, mm. so provided you have a verifiable source of income. Mm. So a lot of Lagosians or Nigerians don't have a verifiable source of income. They earn one, one way or the other, but their income is not in a manner that you can, that's structured. Mm. If you work in, in, a, in an organized sector, they can tie you to your salary or something. A salary, where that so so mm -hmm. a lot of Nigerians don't even have salaries. A lot of Nigerians are moving from that salary earning mindset to mm -hmm. 
business, business. any mindset, which is actually the way forward anyway. Mm. But at the end of the day, it still boils down to the government. Mm. You know what I mean? Because everything rises and falls on the government. Right. So these houses are there. The financing also has to be provided by the government to make mm. these things easy for Nigerians because, I mean, that's supposed to be their primary obligation. Let's still talk about housing, which is your, your key focus, uh, where you actually, you know, operate. Yes. You know, in a time where we have terrible inflation and that yes. we have um, crazy interest rates and uh, they are building demolitions uh, ongoing and then um, people who have actually invested in real estate are crying that, um, you know, uh, all their earnings, all their investments are actually going down so what would your advice be because we're trying to hedge inflation we're trying inflation, to hedge yeah. interest rate yet um you know our investment for people who have actually invested in that area uh, are complaining about um, government pulling down their buildings okay so so let's go to the chase so i like i like the the, the question because I, I in the past in recent times we've all seen videos mm. splattered all over social media of houses being demolished mm. by the government yeah so the, so these are these are these are very sad times mm. the honest truth but the honest truth is it is very impossible for lagos state government mm. or a certain government mm to give you an approval for a building mm. and come back and demolish it if you have actually followed due process. Okay, so due process um, was so, not so followed. Due, so due process wasn't followed. So okay. some of them did not, a large chunk of them didn't follow due process. Mm. A lot of people just buy land without verifying and they start putting up structures, gigantic structures, without even getting approvals. According to Lagos State Government, about fairly 20% of our houses in Lagos states are registered. Mm are registered thoroughly you know, with the government. So a lot of houses don't even have accurate title documents. So before you even embark on that project, you must do your findings about the area. Some areas are acquisition. They, are, they belong to the government. Government has actually left them for certain futuristic projects. Mm. So you cannot just go there and just buy land for many money there and start developing. In the next 10, 20 years, 50 years, the government will come and pull it down. So, so invariably, there is, there's a bit of a maybe communication gap somewhere. Because if you yes. ask me, so some of those people will tell you that they have title documents. Some would say that um, they were not even told that. Uh, how, how, okay, how come it's taking government so long, you know, after a while, uh, if uh, those lands were not really approved, how come uh, initial uh, demolition was not done when they were, when they were constructing, yeah. and after they have settled in, you know, these things are now what they are saying. So, so that's 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 one very unique thing about the government. The government is not always they don't act fast as you expect, mm -hmm. but eventually they would they would they, they would do what they would do the needful. Okay. So now, so 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 now, let me tell you. So sometimes you can, you could even have genuine titles to mm -hmm. your property. Yes. And the government, if need be, needs it for a certain public. Mm. project overriding yeah. public interest like roads and all that mm. they come and tell you please we need this thing for certain projects yeah. but they compensate you adequately okay as provided you have title documents mm. if you don't have title document that's another topic of discussion but if you have title documents genuinely and the project and your house is an is overriding public interest for mm. probably for roads mm. expansion and all that government gives you compensation all right Okay, so as we round off now, Mustafa, so let's just recap again, you know, inflation, interest rate for real estate developers and people who uh, say that their businesses are going down because they cannot really cope with funding. What would that advice be uh, for them and uh, especially for the developers and of course for government as well as we round off? Okay, so so for real estate developers, I think I think is, is a good time to be alive. Uh, the market right now is lucrative. And yes, the challenges are in there, but it's still so lucrative. I mean, looking at uh, the values of properties here and there, but also for potential investors, real estate, real estate investment is also still so lucrative. So yes, there can be small, a little snag here and there, but at the end of the day, you're going to get it right. Mm. Yes, that's it. All right, thank you so much, Amusta, for, for, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful me insight that you thank have you. brought thank on you the show today. All right, I have been speaking with Mustafa Ewen Lahi. He's a real estate surveyor and valuer, as well as a public affairs analyst. And we have been looking at the recent uh, interest rate plus inflation in the country and how uh, they have affected real estate development. That's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.